Hello everyone, my name is Pete and this, this is Fun Tips. In today's episode, I want to introduce you to the new framework presented at WWDC24 by Apple, which is called Swift Testing. Swift Testing is not more than an improved version of what we originally had for testing on Xcode. Uh, normally we use XCTest and that framework has been for so long it originally becomes the part of the integration with Objective-C, right? And it, it evolves to support Swift. However, has we got Swift and then Swift UI and then Swift Data, now Apple decided to improve our testing process because there are a lot of boilerplate sometimes, a lot of repetitive testing that could be fit in just one single uh, testing logic, but with different parameters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a better organization. Well, there are a lot of things that we could talk. But in this particular video, I will just you show you an introduction of Swift testing and just a first step to integrate into project and also doing our first first refactor using this new framework. Okay, so you will see that there are a lot of information. This is like uh, the, the main page, landing page with the. Uh, Swift testing uh, introduction, right? Here we have like uh, um, the purpose to make it clear and expressive API and so on. Um, we also have documentation uh, more in, in depth about uh, how to read and, and understand this framework. Uh, particularly, there are two videos that I recommend you to watch. One is meet Swift testing from WWDC24 and go further with Swift testing. Both are great, are, are part one and part two of this uh, uh, introduction to Swift testing, okay? Of course, uh, they provided uh, a GitHub page when they got the repository of this framework to be integrated in your project, okay? Um, okay, for now, what I'm going to use here is a demo that I recorded, or I created, sorry, for an article talking about MB pattern and if MBVM is good enough for SwiftUI. I don't want to start a fight again here, but if you want to take a look to that article, I will leave it in the description, okay? The, uh, but in this case, we will use it as a base for uh, refactoring uh, this um, uh, uh, the usage of exit test into Swift testing. For this project. So just briefly, let me introduce you to this project. It's basically an online store, right? I'm using a fake API uh, to just get some products from an, an online API, okay? And here, for example, I'm deciding to buy these two, well, well, two items of this, two quantities, sorry, of this uh, item, this bag. Then I have a t-shirt here. I could just select one and I go to cart and then I have uh, the total per piece. And for this one is 22, okay? So the total is for 242, okay? And then we sell, we say yes, we want to purchase. There you go. And basically we reset the app state, okay? Don't worry about uh, the logic under the hood. If you want to learn more, uh, I will also leave the description, uh, the repository for this, if you want to take a look about uh, the logic itself, okay? But right now here, what I want to introduce you here is the um, uh, functions that I'm testing, okay? Here I have just one test, uh, which is, uh, or a set of tests uh, related to car store. Car store is basically um, everything that is inside of this uh, screen. So if I go back here and press these uh, two items, you will see that the car contains two products, okay? Two products, and this product has uh, a quantity number equal two, and this one equal one, okay? So this is what we want to test. If you can see here, we are testing the total amount, uh, a string reflected here, for example, and we have other kind of uh, operations to subtract quantities, uh, remove a product from the card, uh, remove everything um, uh, and also adding new uh, uh, values to the chart, etc. To, to the card, sorry. So, 
And you can see here that you have to, for example, use test for this uh, with using exit test. Okay, you have to create a class, right? And that's it, right? And and other thing is that well, you maybe have to uh, generate a specific um, a package of objects that will support your testing. For example, in this case, I was too lazy, and then I just added uh, some, let's say, car items individually per test, right? Maybe it's not ideal, but it's, it's what I did. And well, you will see that, for example, there are particular things like subtracting and then subtracting, but are all both are related to subtract, right? But since there are specific scenarios in the in the set of subtracting, I had to create individual testing. Okay, so okay, uh, all of these things could be improved using Swift testing, and this is one. Uh, we're going to do here. For this particular uh, uh, video, I will refactor this one, okay? The total amount uh, uh, string that we will test in this uh, particular unit test. So, okay, just briefly, let me introduce you here to that we have two uh, car items containing a product, product one uh, with quantity three and a product two with quantity one Oh, a third one, uh, product three with quantity two, okay? Um, I've created an API, a uh, mock API with just a test succeeding, so meaning that I return some um, amount of information and I'm not getting any error or so. And the expected result at the end is this number, okay? So we make the calculation and all these uh, products with this amount of, of with this price multiplied by the quantity along with all the items in the car uh, should result in this amount, okay? If I run this right now, let me run it, you should see that the test will pass, okay? It took a while for some reason, yeah, but yeah, we got a success here. Now, um, you will see that all the tests are in just one category, okay? We'll fix all of that uh, coming up. And by the way, I'm using Xcode 16 beta. Uh, at the moment, I'm recording this uh, video. And this is important because uh, Swift testing is just supported on Xcode 16 and Swift 6. So uh, just Take that in consideration if you're watching this and you're still using Xcode 15 or earlier for some reason. So it's only available on Xcode 16 and above. All right, so let's introduce, uh, let's add a new uh, package here to introduce uh, Swift testing. Let's add a new package dependency. You will see right here that I already have Swift testing because I just uh, use it in another project. Um, and right, right now, at the moment I'm recording this, the latest version is 0 0.10, okay? We'll use that one. We will use it in online store and, and v test. okay? There you go. Now we have Swift testing in our project. And well, for some reason that I am not fully understanding, uh, it is using Swift syntax under the hood. Probably because the test wrapper that you will see, it's a macro and it requires some uh, usage of Swift syntax. And why I know this? Because I created my own macro that you can uh, watch in the description below. And also because I created a new se a, a series creating my own macro. So if you want to take a look to that, I'll also using, uh, leaving you a car on top of this video, okay? Sorry for the spam. Okay, now that we have um, Swift testing, let's use it, right? So let's import, in this case it's not Swift testing, but it's just testing, okay? And let's use command U to run all the tests in one shot first, just to make this compiling and see if everything is fine. Okay, 
Everything is working as expected. Nice. Now, one particular thing I need to clarify is that you can have both Swift testing and exit test in the same file, in the same project, okay? It, that it is not an issue. So that means you don't have to upgrade every or all your tests in one shot, okay? You can do it gradually, which is great. So don't worry, you have enough time to do it on your own pace. So then, how can we start? So normally, if you want to create a suite of tests, you need to create a class for exit test. But in this case, you don't have to do that. You just need uh, to create a struct. And one of the cool things of the Swift environment is that Apple is creating the frameworks uh, using uh, value types. That, and that means uh, we solve eventually all those issues with memory leaks and all those stuff. So, but for this particular Swift testing framework is still awesome. So let's then you create a car store test. Okay. And I'm going to mark this as deprecated, but it will still work. Okay. Okay. Now, how can we create the first test? Let's use the test macro and automatically from Xcode, you will autocomplete a placeholder. Basically, you just need the name of the test you want to run. Let's copy paste on this, right? And the good luck here is that you don't need the test prefix anymore. That was required for exit test to recognize a test, okay? Because this, this test uh, wrapper will do it for you, okay? Automatically is adding async throws for your functions, for your testing, but mm, we don't need that for this particular test, okay? Now, let's copy paste all these tests, okay? And copy paste this for now and let's review again the things so we have a car items right we have a car store and then we are expecting something here we make some uh, we got some some total price string and we are just comparing the strings literally okay um, and for that we are using XET assert equal for Swift testing, this uh, ceremony or this uh, assert is not required anymore. We just need to expect the macro, the first time the macro expect. And inside here, you can just add uh, what is your expectation. So for this particular one, we will say the total price should be equal to this uh, number. Okay. And we can get rid of all of this. We don't need that anymore. Okay, now we can proceed to run the test. But first, let's get rid of this one. We don't need this test anymore from exit test. And now we finally migrated the first test from exit test into Swift testing. It's as simple as that. There's no more uh, complex things or so. And now you will see that this car store test is recognized as a test or has a suite of tests in this particular context. So yeah, I can add more and more tests inside of this car store test, okay? For now, I will just run this particular suite and see what happened. It's really fast. And of course, I can run everything else just to confirm that, yeah, exit test and Swift testing is running together. We will see later that um, this um, sidebar will improve the readability, okay? Um, but you will notice right, of, right away that we have car store test and we have total amount of string. Mm, this is directly representing the string name, or, or sorry, the function name. Okay, but we can make it even better. We can provide a name here, okay? And let's say that um, we know exactly what we want here, 
or how we want to represent this. So we, we could say that this test is to get the total amount to pay has a string, which is what we want, right? So let's do it again and see you, that automatically is updating the test, the, the test name. And now you can put any name you want, but yeah, you can add a more readable thing here that, you know, complements the string or this test name here. If we go here to the, uh, I don't know the name of this, uh, well, report navigator, uh, you will see that there is one particular new item here called insight. Right now, you don't have, we don't have anything, but you we will see in coming episodes that some test could spend more time than expected and or any additional information that could be relevant to improve your test, okay? Here, you will get that information. But for now, uh, this is what we got. We got a better presentation of testing and we also notice that this uh, spec is quite easy to figure out in our test. Um, just, yeah, sorry, one, one last thing before before ending. Let's see that um, this expectation is not right. What do you get? Uh, right now, uh, we say that um, the expectation is total price string. Um, we got this one, but we are getting, we are trying to get this 62, which is not making sense, okay? And you can also represent this saying that, okay, uh, the expected should be 62, but the total price string is another value, okay? So right off the bat, you could see that particular uh, issue if you're facing that, okay? Yeah, everything is working as expected. Okay, that will be it for this episode. You notice it's really fast to import this Swift testing into your project, and it's just a minute to translate one exit test into Swift testing. There are a lot of things to talk, but I will leave it for a coming episode. Remember that this will be a series, so I will create a playlist in my YouTube channel. And if you want more about Swift, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and help me because all my content is free. And the only way you can support me is with likes and subscriptions. That will be it for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.